It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world. In this edition of the Global Alert News Hour, new and deadly pathogens, natural or man-made? What are the global elite scheduling for the masses as they meet and make plans in Davos? Where did the rich and powerful go from there? The land down under, incineration and carnage continues. Scientists sound the alarm, advancing the global doomsday clock to 100 seconds before midnight. What can the common citizen do to help turn the tide? A literary giant defines patriotism. This and much, much more to cover in today's installment of Frontline Reports. Listen carefully to this headline title from Time Magazine issued yesterday. Quote, the end is nigh. Doomsday clock reaches 100 seconds to midnight. This was the international announcement just issued by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. They went on to state this, quote, humanity continues to face two simultaneous existential dangers, nuclear war and climate change. More correctly stated is climate collapse. But both threats, the report states, are compounded by a threat multiplier, cyber-enabled information warfare that undercuts society's ability to respond, the experts wrote in their announcement. Here's the unspun truth. The list of existential threats closing in on us all by the day is exponentially longer than these scientists have stated. With the global climate engineering, weather warfare, aka biological warfare, assault at the top of the list, an issue that no official source dares even to mention. The loosely bound threads of industrialized, militarized civilization are unraveling by the day. A criminal and cancerous power structure is making increasingly desperate maneuvers to ensure their stranglehold on power until the last possible moment. And even now, the majority of populations in first world nations are still distracted with bread and circus orchestrated theater. The impeachment theater of the absurd at the top of that list. All the while, populations in third world nations are increasingly occupied with a day-to-day -day effort to survive. Question, would the power structure utilize covert biological warfare against populations that it perceives as an increasing threat to their stranglehold on power? Would they do this in a last-ditch desperate attempt to control and contain the masses before the masses fully awaken and realize what has been done to them? Stay with me. I'll try to connect some critical dots in this equation. First, the official narrative. This new report was published last week from numerous mainstream sources. Quote, ancient, never-before-seen viruses discovered locked up in Tibetan glacier. That's what the report states. It goes on to say this. In a worst-case scenario, this ice melt from climate change could release pathogens into the environment, the researchers wrote in their study. Stop and consider this narrative for a moment. We're expected to blindly believe that human populations are now in peril because of deadly glaciers that are going to unleash their killer pathogens. And at the same time, we're expected to believe that the thousands of military biolabs all over the globe, hundreds right here in the U.S., are not the actual source of the new pathogens that keep popping up. Fresh outbreaks that all too often occur at times and in locations that serve the increasingly desperate agenda of certain power structures, certain factions of the power structure. Consider this 2015 headline report from USA Today and other sources, quote, Biolabs in your backyard, inside America's secret biolabs. From the report, quote, Vials of bioterror bacteria have gone missing. Lab mice infected with deadly viruses have escaped and wild rodents have been found making nests with research waste. Cattle infected in a university's vaccine experiments were repeatedly sent to slaughter and their meat sold for human consumption. Protective hazmat suits meant to guard workers, lab workers from lethal viruses such as Ebola and bird flu have repeatedly failed. Oversight of biological research labs is fragmented and secretive. 
even when research facilities commit the most egregious safety or security breaches, as more than 100 labs are known to have done, federal regulators keep their names secret. Of particular concern are mishaps occurring at institutions working with the world's most dangerous pathogens in biosafety level three and four labs. The two highest levels of containment that have proliferated since the 9-11 terror attacks in 2001. Ask yourself why that is. The report continues. Yet there is no publicly available list of these labs, and the scope of their research and safety records are largely unknown to most state health departments charged with responding to disease outbreaks. Even the federal government doesn't know where all these labs are. The Government Accountability Office has warned this for years. The report goes on to warn that if pathogens being engineered in these labs were to escape or to be released into populations, quote, the consequences could be devastating if accidents were to occur with lab-created strains of deadly influenza viruses that are purposely engineered to be easier to spread than viruses or pathogens found in nature, end quote. Who specifically made this statement in the report? Dr. David Riemann a microbiology professor at Stanford University. Dr. Riemann is also a federal advisor to the president of the Infectious Diseases Society of America. Now consider the climate engineering aerosols and the spraying operations that are dispersing them in disguise all over the globe. Consider their potential to be utilized for the release of pathogens. With that in mind, please listen to this audio recording of the second most recognized geoengineer in the world, Dr. Ken Caldera, also from Stanford, former government scientist that worked at Lawrence Livermore Labs. Please listen carefully to this recording. It fits into everything I am outlining on this broadcast. Again, former U.S. government Defense Department scientist, Dr. Ken Caldera. Listen carefully. That means, you know, could you somehow interfere in Earth functioning in a way that you could use it as a military weapon? Could you change climate? Could you, what could you do in terms of manipulating the sort of Earth's physical systems to uh, some some weapon? Well, you know, some of the ideas were, were, okay, we could, maybe we could blow up hydrogen bombs, you know, underwater, offshore, and make a tidal wave that would go over a city. And, you know, the result was, well, isn't it easier just to drop the hydrogen bombs on the city, you know, that, that there are, now you could imagine though, say putting pathogens in a cloud, let the cloud, uh, you know, go over somewhere and then would rain down on your enemy and create, you know, do chemical or germ warfare in this kind of way. Now let's add the statement you just heard from former U.S. Defense Department scientist, Dr. Ken Caldera to this 1977 headline report from the Washington Post and other sources. Quote, Army conducted 239 secret open-air germ warfare tests that was on U.S. populations. Innocent, unknowing U.S. populations. Business as usual, then and now. Only now it's on a scale that's incomprehensible. Follow me through, there's more dots to connect. From KOMO News. This headline, this is in Washington state, first U.S. case of deadly new virus found in Washington state, CDC says, CDC, the Center for Disease Control, that we know whose primary task it is to mask threats from the population, not to expose them. The report states a dangerous new virus that has sickened hundreds and killed six victims in China has now spread to Washington state, say officials with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We know it's much, much worse in China now than, than this headline alluded to at that time. In the first case of the novel, quote, coronavirus detected in the United States, Governor Jay Inslee said Washington state's local and state health departments were prepared for this contingency, quote, they have practiced and drilled this situation and they were ready. Sounds a little like the 9-11 drills or the train bombing drills in Spain that happened right before that occurred or the 777 bus bombings in the UK, also drills occurring right before that occurred. Is this all just a coincidence? Let's keep going. In addition to the potential coronavirus pandemic, what else is scheduled for U.S. populations from AccuWeather and other sources. This new headline, second surge of flu activity is expected for parts of the U.S. 
The entire country is experiencing active transmission of the flu, the report states, with many states at record high levels, according to flu experts. Now let's step back and consider some quotes from those that were within the power structure. This is from former UK Secretary of State, Dennis Healy. He said this, World events do not occur by accident. They are made to happen. Whether it is to do with national issues or commerce, and most of them are staged and managed by those who hold the purse strings. Now let's consider this quote from Henry Kissinger. Depopulation should be the highest priority of foreign policy towards the third world. And do we think they're going to stop at the third world? Those in power certainly now consider especially the U.S. population, to be the greatest potential threat to their control if the U.S. population would wake up and realize the United States isn't a country with a government. It's a criminal government that owns a country and is manipulating it to their end. Now consider this critically important quote from Zygmunt Brzezinski, which I've stated before but needs to be heard again in this context. Brzezinski advisor to all presidents from Obama all the way back to Johnson. Brzezinski stated this on the record. In early times, it was easier to control a million people than to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control them. Think about that. The neoconservative think tank, Project for a New American Century, whose members are among the most powerful people in the U.S. and from abroad, published a report in September of 2000, a year before 9-11. The report was titled, Rebuilding America's Defenses. The report made clear this group was focused on the specific agenda of turning the U.S. military into a vehicle of global domination. Consider this excerpt from page 60 of the report. Quote, Advanced forms of biological warfare that can target specific genotypes may transform biological warfare from the realm of terror to a politically useful tool. Again, this report from the Project for a New American Century with some of the most well-known power brokers in the U.S., including Darth, excuse me, Dick Cheney, not Darth Cheney, I always want to label him Darth Cheney because that's what he appears to be and all those like him. People like that, Wolfowitz, Rumsfeld, all of these people from before 9-11 calling for a quote new Pearl Harbor event to push this military agenda forward. Then we had 9-11, clearly a false flag event that anyone who does any investigation can see through. Buildings don't fall down from nothing like Building 7, the third building that fell. Anyone with the courage to investigate this issue will discover what they didn't want to know. And now we have potentially a global pandemic unfolding. And if somehow this one is stopped, when will another one be ignited? Whether Ebola or coronavirus or something else. And all the while we have so-called official science sources trying to point the finger at melting glaciers as the source and not the thousands of biolabs all around the globe that have been preparing for this type of action for decades. Connect the dots. Another headline from Science Page News and other sources. China, coronavirus, Beijing confirms human-to-human -human transmission of deadly virus. And this headline, that's already out of date, I'll update that in a moment. But the headline states, China on edge of chaos, seven cities, 23 million people under quarantine. As of last evening, that number was up to 12 cities, 40 million people under quarantine. Final report excerpt, though this is an emergency in China, officials with the World Health Organization have not yet stated it's a global health emergency, but there's a very real possibility that it may be declared one very, very soon. Since these previous statements were made, 12 cities locked down, 40 million people, this headline from the UK Guardian, China steps up coronavirus clampdown as chaos hits hospitals. And this from DW News in Germany. China puts tens of millions under lockdown to contain coronavirus. The LA Times and other sources have confirmed that this virus has never been seen before. It was previously unknown. Again, I ask, just nature or an ever more desperate and dangerous power structure playing their cards? And all the while, 
the majority of U.S. populations are being distracted by the impeachment bread and circus theater of the absurd. The unfolding situation in China has come at the worst possible time, the Chinese Lunar New Year, when populations are trying to travel at a massive scale. Again, the situation in China is very possibly much worse than is yet being disclosed. Panic in China could unfold very soon. Surrounding countries could follow. Time will tell. Western world leaders have just met to make plans in Davos. Then they flew straight to Israel. Again, this question. Who is the true head of the Western power structure? Who is the tail wagging the dog? Now let's take that further. How many dogs is the tail wagging? Search the protocols, dig deep, investigate. Dozens of breaking headline reports in a moment. First, to each and every individual that is doing their absolute best to stay informed, to wake others, and to help turn the tide of insanity. Thank you, more than I can say. It is our collective efforts that can yet make a difference at this dark hour. This is Dane Wigington. You're listening to the Global Alert News Hour, episode number 233, January 25th, 2020. In this broadcast, news that covers the issues we must face if we're to have any chance of changing course. This commercial-free, frontline news broadcast is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org and paid for by geoengineeringwatch.org. This news hour is broadcast throughout Northern California, 1670 AM, 104.9 FM, and 105.7 FM, Saturday mornings from 6 to 7, Sunday mornings, same time slot, repeat broadcast. Wednesdays on the East Coast on the PRN Radio Network, 2 p.m., Recordings of this broadcast can be found at geoengineeringwatch.org under the recent top stories and radio sections. The latest Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials can be ordered from the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for our approximate cost of producing and shipping. Having printed compelling materials to pass on is exponentially more effective than anything that can be conveyed verbally. A picture is indeed worth a thousand words. Another way to help us sound the alarm is to attend Gem Fair events, G-E-M-F-A-I-R-E. You can look them up online. Gem Fair has been and continues to be an extremely dedicated ally in the fight to expose and halt climate engineering. Visit the geoengineeringwatch.org informational booth at all Gem Fair events. Get free Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials. Help us in the critical effort to wake the masses. The next Gem Fair event, Roseville, California, January 31st through February 2nd at the Grounds Jones Hall. Moving on, headlines from Bloomberg.com, quote, climate events could trigger global financial crisis. Bank of International Settlements warns, and this question I would ask, what about an engineered global pandemic on top of everything? Why would we think that those in power would not exercise that option? when they know the planet can no longer support the population, when they know the climate is collapsing, ecosystems all over the globe are collapsing, fisheries are collapsing, crops are collapsing, panic is coming one way or the other, why wouldn't they speed that process up? I'm simply asking the question. Do we think those in power are too benevolent to do something like this? We know that that's not true. History makes that abundantly clear. Life means nothing to those at the top of the food chain. And the whole political theater is nothing but a theater. Those who control the theater are those who control the money. They control militaries, thus they control countries, and the notion that there's some sort of democratic process going on here is simply not reality. Let's add more dots to the equation. From sbs.com.au, Prince Charles calls on leaders to take, quote, revolutionary climate action. Prince Charles, tell the truth, as you most certainly know that climate engineering operations have already been wreaking havoc on the planet's life support systems for over 70 years. And this question, does climate action include, Prince Charles, culling populations with engineered deadly pathogens? Simply asking the question. More pieces to the puzzle. NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, gets the go-ahead, this report states, to study climate plan B. Geoengineering. It's a new report. Are we really unable to see through this smoke and mirror distraction? As if climate engineering isn't occurring every single day above our heads? 
climate system is completely disrupted and derailed. The weather is completely transformed. Ozone layer is disintegrating. More on that in a moment. When will the majority realize we are literally in a very near-term fight for life? It's past time for Americans and other populations of first world nations, but in the case of Americans, it's time for Americans to realize that those at the top not only consider you expendable, but you're an increasing liability to them, especially in America, because America's citizens are pretty heavily armed. We all know that. Why wouldn't they use some means or method to cool populations like dispersing pathogens from aircraft as Government, former government scientist Ken Caldera stated in his own voice on the record as I just played in this broadcast. We have to have the courage to face reality if we have, if, if we have any chance of changing it. And to our military brothers and sisters, I am pleading with you to please investigate. Please objectively search for answers as to what you're a part of unknowingly in many respects. And the same goes for military members in other countries, even China and Russia, other major powers. Those at the very top of the power structure who gather in places like Davos or in Israel, ultimately they are all colluding and cooperating together. Ultimately they all know that their populations can no longer be maintained. And no matter how adversarial these superpowers seem to be at the surface, there is collusion and cooperation behind the scenes. We know that from the climate engineering issue. We know that from government documents relating to the climate engineering issue that specifically state this. Search geoengineeringwatch.org, massive Senate document, 800 pages long. You don't have to go through all 800 pages. We have the most important sections highlighted in that link. Investigate. Please, especially to our military brothers and sisters, we have no chance of turning a tide without you waking up. We have no chance without that. Moving on, climate change, another headline from multiple sources. Climate change could blow up the economy, could, may, might. How absurd is that? If we live on a planet that resembles Venus, what economy will there be? The headline continues, banks aren't ready. As Geoengineering Watch has unwaveringly stated on the record for over 10 years, climate and environmental collapse will force economic and societal collapse. Power structures know this. As climate collapse has become inevitable, power structures and their desperation will likely become exponential. Is bioterrorism and biological warfare a part of the equation? Is such an event already unfolding or perhaps just over the near-term horizon? Time will soon enough reveal answers. And the banks aren't the only entities that are not ready for what's coming. More headlines. Quote, not ready for economic collapse. Only 41% of Americans have $1,000 to cover an emergency. 41%. Making America great again. Another headline. U.S. industrial production suffers worst year since 2015. It's much worse than that, actually. Another headline. Oil bears are back as demand fears go viral. Bottom line is there is much more oil, ultimately, than we will be able to burn because before we can burn it all, the planet will be completely dead, inhospitable. And that's the mathematical, statistical fact of the matter. We are killing our host with each passing day, with the climate engineering, weather warfare, aka biological warfare assault being at the top of the list of destructive human behaviors. Another headline, U.S. Canadian oil company bankruptcies surge 50% in 2019. Another headline, international cargo on U.S. Great Lakes plunges. Another headline. These are all from last week, by the way. J.C. Penney closing yet more stores. And this, HSBC cutting staff. Another headline, retail carnage continues. Bows lays off hundreds, shutters all retail stores. Another headline, papyrus closing stores nationwide in the next four to six weeks. Another headline, Jaguar Land Rover to cut 500 jobs. Another headline, Texas Instruments to close two Dallas area chip factories amid slowdown. Another headline, Intel layoffs, reports of cuts amid reorganization of Intel's data center group. Another headline, UK consumers cut back on spending again, adding to economic gloom. 
for the record, no functional environment, no economy, no civilization, no people. And now let's add the sort of pathogens that are being released on top of that equation, climate collapse, biosphere collapse, converging catastrophes without question. Another headline, the world looks to abandon the dollar as U.S. sanctions tighten their grip. Another headline, Baltic dry index, that's the most untarnished indicator of economic activity, all shipping over oceans. Here's the whole headline, Baltic dry continues epic plunge as international monetary fund slashes global GDP forecast. Another headline, billionaires have more wealth than 60% of the global population. Another headline, International Monetary Fund cuts global economic growth forecasts. Another headline, Japan exports shrink for the 13th consecutive month, a further blow to the Japanese economy. Another headline, nearly half a billion people lack decent jobs, states the UN. Another headline, Germany limiting the ability to anonymously purchase gold in an attempt to force people to hold euros. When's that coming for America? Another headline, Russian auto market stalls. Another headline, China posts slowest growth in 29 years, but even that is overstated. A footnote, isn't it at all curious to populations that even as existing stores are closed and boarded up, that new stores are being built? The snake continues to consume its own tail. The economic house of cards, the Ponzi scheme that has kept so much of first world populations from seeing the horizon clearly. A few more headlines. Food insecurity linked with greater risk of premature death. Do we need a report or a study to tell us that if you don't have if you have nothing to eat that you will die? That's very straightforward, isn't it? How about no environment, no people, no trees, no people, dead oceans, no people. Very simple. Ozone layer collapse, no people. All of it's happening at once. Now we have pandemics and other factors entering the equation. And what about nuclear holocaust? What's to prevent those in power from ultimately playing that card? If they can't put enough particulates into the atmosphere from jet aircraft spraying every single day, solar radiation management, and the facilitation of epic wildfires like those occurring in Australia and those that have occurred in the Northern Hemisphere previously, Amazon, Africa, and the, will be coming back to the Northern Hemisphere likely in a few months, with all of those methods of loading the atmosphere with sun-blocking particulates, if that's not enough, when will they trigger nuclear holocaust? Is that their final card? We're going to find out soon enough. More headlines. The greatest extermination in history. How humans won the war on whales. I, I can't... The animal die-off is so profoundly distressing to me, and whales with intelligence levels likely above humans the ability to communicate greater than humans, and we are slaughtering them without conscience. The oceans as a whole are dying, make no mistake about that. One other factor in that equation, TEPCO estimates 44 years to decommission Fukushima number two nuclear plant. That is a complete fallacy. There is no technology to fix Fukushima, no end in sight, and on the current course, we will be long gone before that 44 years comes up, and now let's add the other 450 nuclear facilities around the globe with some 600 plus reactors. The human race has painted itself into an unimaginably dark corner. In fact, Arctic scientists now stating at the rate of runaway climate collapse that is currently unfolding, planetary omnicide could occur in a matter of years. And as unbelievable as that may seem to many in the coming weeks and months, the reality of that potential may become soberingly clear. From childrenshealthdefense.org, vaccine scientists confirm major safety problems. I would encourage everyone to search the video that is available on this World Health Organization two-day global vaccine safety summit, and you can see these health professionals stating on the record, among other discussion points, Points like this, vaccines can be fatal. And this, the design and safety studies make it difficult to spot vaccine problems. And this, safety monitoring of vaccinations is an inadequate, completely inadequate, in fact. And this, vaccine adjuvants increase the risk. Of course they do. When you add aluminum and mercury and 
many other toxic elements to vaccines, how could it not increase the risk? How could there not be a risk? How can they possibly claim vaccines are safe with total immunity given to vaccine companies for all death and injury they cause with kangaroo courts funded by the U.S. government to give cover for the vaccine companies to pay off vaccine victims and their families with the condition that they can never, ever bring the issue up again? Massive cover up, and yet we have so many in the population behaving as if they have Stockholm syndrome, literally defending, tenaciously defending the very sources of power that are harming them. Stockholm syndrome epidemic. Another headline UN draft plans sets 2030 target to avert Earth's sixth mass extinction. A little bit late there. We are far into the sixth great mass extinction, and on the current course. Think about this mathematically, statistically, no wildlife left by 2026. And that's if the rate of die-off didn't increase, which it already has, Australia being a massive example of that. We are free-falling toward total global omnicide. And those who are just going about their life as if nothing is wrong, I am pleading to you, stop, look yourself in the mirror, ask yourself why you're here, and ask yourself how you can help to turn the tide. Everyone is needed. And remember, those in power could not do what they do without the active or passive support of populations, the cooperation of populations. Back to the meeting in Davos from CNBC, a new world disorder. Global leaders head to Davos 2020. Went over that earlier in the broadcast, but I want to continue and connect the dot with these dots. From USA Today, Trump says, quote, America is thriving at Davos Economic Forum as impeachment trial opens, the scripted impeachment theater of mass public distraction. Keep following me through with this. There are important dots here. Again, where did the global leaders go when they left the Davos meeting? From IsraelNationalNews.com, this. Kings, princes, presidents, prime ministers, foreign ministers, all converged on Jerusalem to commemorate the Holocaust. Now, this is the part that matters Vice President Pence and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi were among the dignitaries gathered. Stop and consider that even while the orchestrated impeachment theater of the absurd is ongoing, the leaders of each side of the manufactured political divide, Pelosi and Pence, are holding hands in Israel. And probably not just a coincidence, this headline report issued yesterday from numerous sources. Quote, in the name of Israel's security... Retreating U.S. gives Israel billions more in military funding. Search the USS Liberty. Search the protocols. Search peace propaganda and the promised land. And don't be afraid of the truth. Simply trying to expose the truth. Those who print the money run militaries. They run countries. And we have various factions around the globe but ultimately all of them in many ways colluding and cooperating behind the scenes and populations to all of those power centers are not just expendable, but a rapidly increasing liability, something that must be kept in mind. What agendas are the global power brokers inflicting on the U.S. population to further degrade and debilitate the population? In addition to the toxic aerosol spraying in our skies... In addition to the toxic and neurologically damaging vaccines, in addition to IQ lowering fluoridated water and countless other population degrading and degenerating factors, we have this quote from Reuters.com and other sources US drinking water widely contaminated with quote forever chemicals, environmental watchdog states in new report. From the report, the contamination of US drinking water with man made forever chemicals is far worse than previously estimated. So many factors are so far past the breaking point already, and so many Americans have no idea what's unfolding. That equation must change, and those who are awake and aware already are needed to help make those changes, and your efforts matter in and of themselves. For every single person that anyone who is already awake and aware helps to wake up, that individual matters. Every individual matters. All of it is a part of a collective, a collective consciousness and a collective ability of the awakened to change course. We must have a critical mass of awakening or we have no chance. And that 
primarily includes our military brothers and sisters. We must have them on our side or we have no chance. Another headline. Let's add this to the equation from numerous sources from last week. Remember the, the forever chemicals in the water I just went over? That report? Now let's add this. President Trump removes pollution protections for America's rivers and streams from that report. On Thursday, President Trump issued new rules that remove federal protections for half the nation's wetlands and hundreds of thousands of small waterways. The Trump administration is now finalizing its own set of water rules that will, for the first time in decades, allow for pesticides and fertilizers to be dumped in waterways and open up wetlands to new development. The president stated this, quote, I terminated one of the most ridiculous regulations of all, the disastrous waters of the United States rule, end quote. What was that rule? A rule that protected waterways from industries dumping chemicals into them. So much for making America great again. Loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute until the brutal bitter end. Let's add another new report from the UK Guardian. Pentagon causing toxic pollution by burning firefighting foam, campaigners say. Environmentalists say incinerating a vast stockpile of firefighting foam containing harmful PFAAs. Those are forever chemicals, by the way. Remember the last report I just went over. Is putting communities at risk. That's a gross understatement. It's killing people. It's killing the environment. And again, as biosphere implosion accelerates, power structure desperation will accelerate with it as they struggle to secure Earth's last remaining resources. From jpost.com and other sources, quote, Iran at top of agenda for Netanyahu meetings with Pence, Putin, and Macron. All colluding behind the scenes, who is the tail wagging the dog? It's not hard to connect these dots for anyone who honestly investigates. Now back to biosphere collapse. Let's cover some of those headlines. There are many. I'll get through what I can. From the Moscow Times, quote, freak warm weather threatens birth of baby seals in northern Russia. That's, a, again, an understatement. It threatens the entire biosphere. From sciencemagazine.com, What's creating thousands of craters off the California coast? I've covered this in numerous other broadcasts. These craters are from the thawing and releasing seabed deposits of methane, hydrogen sulfide. This is the rotten egg smell that floats into cities like Seattle that the authorities, quote, don't know what it is or where it came from because they're paid not to know. They're not paid to disclose threats to the population. They're paid to downplay and mask those threats. Hydrogen sulfide is heavier than air, so when these deposits release and hit the sea surface, the hydrogen sulfide stays on the surface and migrates into coastal areas often. Methane rises into the atmosphere, where it's covering the planet like a layer of glass. Again, methane over a 10-year time horizon, from 100 to 120 times more potent than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Mathematically, there is enough methane in seed bed deposits in the Laptev Sea alone to turn this planet into Venus a hundred times over. And in the attempt to mask this from the public, the government is literally falsifying atmospheric data that shows methane readings and they are climate engineering, engineering cool downs, surface cool downs over populations, creating sensationalized headlines to confuse and divide the population and distract that population until the brutal bitter end. We must wake populations up to this fact and many others. Pressing on from counterpunch.org, the rumbling methane enigma. Just gave enough detail on that headline. Methane, seabed deposits blowing out, being reported, officials claiming they don't know what it's all about. That's a lie. They know exactly what it's about. From many sources, emissions of potent greenhouse gas rises, contradicting reports of huge reductions underreporting of the threat across the board on every front. From numerous sources, global resource consumption tops 100 billion tons for the first time. From that report, the world is using up more than 100 billion tons of natural resources per year for the first time ever, while global recycling of raw materials has fallen, according to a new report released Tuesday. 
Since 1970, the human population has doubled, the global economy has grown fourfold, and trade has expanded tenfold, a trajectory that, in the absence of widespread recycling, relentlessly pushes up the demand for energy and resources. The human race is literally exterminating itself, and we are being told or trained to believe that perpetual expansion on a finite planet with finite resources is somehow possible. It should be extraordinarily easy to see through that lie. And the report further states global use of materials is projected to balloon to 170 to 184 billion tons by mid-century. Total fabrication. We will never get out of the 2020s on the current course. Barely into the 2020s on the current course. We are going 100 miles an hour. We're 10 feet from impact. And no matter how hard we put the brakes on, we are going to hit very soon. We are through the guardrail. And when I make such a statement for those who seem to feel disgruntled, and I hear from many of them, and say, well, why should I even try then? If I'm not going to be able to acquire my McMansion and my McYacht, why should I continue to try to make any sort of a difference? Because if we can collectively salvage any part of Earth's life support system so that anyone makes it through what's coming, we owe that to the whole. We owe that to the greater good. And collectively, if we summon our courage and we face the storm head on, we can yet make a difference even at this late hour. More breaking news on biosphere collapse from the UK Guardian and other sources. Study finds shocking rise in levels of potent greenhouse gas. This is directly relating to the now disclosed disintegrating ozone layer in the northern hemisphere as well, not just the southern hemisphere. And the fact that that disintegrating ozone layer is responsible for at least half the warming in the Arctic. An ozone layer that we were told again and again over the last few years was at times recovering. A lie. June during watch stated on the record it was a lie. We now have confirmation that it was a lie. I'm asking people to simply investigate the frontline data while we still have anything left to salvage. Another headline. London records highest atmospheric pressure in more than 300 years. It's not just more than 300 years. It's since record keeping began in 1692. Highest atmospheric pressure. And the report stated this. Computerized forecast models run by the Met Office in the UK and other meteorological centers predicted this development with near pinpoint precision because it's not a prediction. It's a scheduled event. Atmospheric pressure zones being created by ionosphere heater facilities and atmospheric aerosol dispersing operations. These so-called forecasters aren't forecasting. They're reading the scheduled weather events. And we know that. Again, I've been over that again and again from our FOIAs, our Freedom of Information Act requests that geoengineeringwatch.org acquired by suing the U.S. Department of Commerce to get these requests released from NOAA, even though 2,000 documents were completely redacted, some of those documents weren't redacted, and from those documents we know that the scheduled weather is being passed down from the top, ultimately Raytheon, defense contractor, geoengineering contractor, that is passing down the scheduled weather all the way to the local meteorologist level, just like those in the employment of KRCR in Northern California. That's how they know days in advance that a particular day will be, quote, mostly sunny. And on those days, so often, no natural clouds in the sky at all, only jet aircraft emissions, reading the schedule weather. And I look forward to the day when the climate engineering insanity is completely exposed and all those who played a part in hiding this issue from the population by pretending it wasn't going on. I look forward to the day when they will have to face the population and explain why they participated in the criminal cover-up of climate engineering. I long for that day. And by the way, for all the awake and aware activists, we need to speed this process up, the process of exposing those that are helping to hide climate engineering. Send credible printed data to them, to their office, to their staff. Help to call them out on the carpet. The sooner, the better. More biosphere collapse headlines, as I alluded to earlier, this headline. Damage to the ozone layer caused by ultra-potent greenhouse gases may be to blame for half of the Arctic warming in the span of the last 50 years. Ozone layer is continuing to disintegrate. If we face no other challenges, the ozone disintegration alone is an extinction-level event. And at the current rate of collapse, at the current rate of destruction, climate engineering being the single greatest cause of ozone destruction, not the only cause, but the single greatest, if we continue on this course, mathematically speaking, based on readings being taken by a former NASA contract engineer that works directly with geoengineeringwatch.org, we face total ozone collapse by 2025 or 2026. 
again, for the record, how many times over the last 10 years of geoengineeringwatch.org's existence have we tried to sound the alarm on the ozone layer collapse, and now mainstream sources are finally starting to admit to it because they can't hide it any longer. And we said that time would come. Indeed, it is unfolding. From toothdig.com, this. Doctors sound the alarm on climate emergency. From that report, the doctors are worried about the climate emergency in recent days in the UK's Royal College of Physicians. They have announced that it's halting investments in climate changing fossil fuel and mining companies. Far too little, far too late. Question, when will the medical community sound the alarm on the highly toxic climate engineering aerosol particulate contamination that is wreaking havoc on human health and the entire web of life? Respiratory diseases of every description are now epidemic. When will physicians sound the alarm on the highly toxic and decimating vaccinations? It's time to come clean across the board. And here's another question. When will the Truth Dig news source dig deeper and find the courage to tell the truth about the climate engineering global assault and its devastating effects to the planet and the planet's life support systems? And I have communicated with one of the primary Truth Dig journalists who acknowledged that he knew climate engineering was going on and he planned to address it. That was about five years ago. When's that going to happen? That journalist knows who he is. From CNN, this, more Americans are alarmed by global warming than ever before, survey reveals. The report states this, the proportion of Americans who are, quote, alarmed by global warming tripled over the last five years and is now at an all-time high, a new survey shows. The report continues, horrific catastrophic disasters that Americans are experiencing need to be interpreted for people to really understand, the report states. And what we are seeing is that when many Americans see these things in their backyards or on their television screens, they're starting to ask, quote, what the hell is going on with the weather? What's part of confusing the Americans that still don't think the planet's warming? Climate engineering cool downs that are sensationalized by the power structure controlled media. And let's give an example from last week of that. The headlines of cold, cold, cold from Florida last week. Headlines like this, that the power structure and the geoengineers used to confuse and divide the population as to the true state and immediacy of climate collapse. Here's the headline. Manatees huddle together for warmth in freezing Florida, end quote. And this headline, quote, cold stunned iguanas falling from Florida trees the one-day engineered winter wonder in Florida. Yes, the climate engineers are continuing with their ever more desperate attempts to engineer weather whiplash surface cooldowns as the planet as a whole plummets toward total meltdown. Patented processes of chemical ice nucleation, cloud seeding are at the core of engineered winter mayhem. So-called winter storms for much of the U.S. are now routinely fueled with moisture flows straight out of the record warm Gulf of Mexico, And it seems the climate engineering weather terrorists are scheduling a late January winter weather assault for the eastern U.S. We'll see if they can pull it off. In the meantime, a constant overcast, a constant murk and or drizzle continues over much of the U.S. Welcome to climate engineering and solar radiation management. Paid liars at power structure propaganda sources like the Weather Channel are increasingly transparent with their attempts to cover the tracks of the climate engineers by trying to explain away the obviously engineered weather as being, quote, natural, when it's anything but. On the subject of paid liars, this report needs to be heard from Yahoo and other sources. Here's the headline, quote, hundreds of dead birds found in Wales. They hit the earth fleeing a bird of prey, end quote. Listen to this. This is absurd. Mystified investigators were left scratching their heads after finding scores, hundreds, of bloodied starlings in the lane in North Wales. But now, wildlife experts believe they have solved the mystery of why hundreds of starlings were killed by plummeting into the road. They swooped to avoid a bird of prey. More than 300 starlings are believed to have dived down to dodge the predator but failed to fly back up in time. Can anybody possibly comprehend the absurdity of this report. How many remember other even more insane claims by so-called official sources, claims like the massive weather radar anomalies resulting from climate engineering being 100 miles long, 10 miles wide, and we are told this was clouds of ladybugs, or in another case, clouds of dragonflies. That would be a thousand square mile sun-blocking cloud of insects 
Question, are the disinformation sources that manufacture such absurd narratives as all those I have just mentioned, laughing it up over a beer at the local pub, laughing about the public seemingly accepting such absurdly false narratives? Back to the bigger picture, our burning planet, with climate engineering further fueling the overall fire, short-term highly toxic cool-downs at the cost of a worsened overall warming. Australian bushfires are the worst ever, and so is the disinformation campaign, claims vice.com. Who is the disinformation source, vice.com? You, who denies and omits the climate engineering elephant in the sky as all major power structure con controlled sources do. From nature.com, Australia, show the world what climate action looks like. Nature.com, please tell the truth about climate engineering. From channelnewsasia.com, this, forget a new normal, experts say Australia's worst bushfires are still lie ahead. That's because that's what's scheduled for Australia. And this, from ABC Australia, a harbinger of chemical ice nucleation cooldowns being carried out in Australia. Again, from ABC Australia, Melbourne weather, huge hail pelts outer suburbs as firefighters continue to battle wildfires. There are many more tragic headlines on the decimation of Australia that I do not have time to cover in this one-hour broadcast. But here's the bottom line. What is occurring in Australia and in countless other locations around the world is not so much an act of nature as it is an agenda being carried out by an ever more desperate power structure. The climate engineering, weather warfare, biological warfare assault is core to the equation. This is not in any way to deny all other forms of anthropogenic damage to the planet. We have been horrible stewards of this planet in too many ways to begin to consider without hours and hours of discussion. But rather, to implicate climate engineering at the core of this equation is to state that there can be no legitimate discussion of the climate from any perspective without first and foremost addressing the global climate engineering Manhattan Project that is taking place over our heads nearly every day, contaminating every breath we take contaminating indeed the entire web of life on planet Earth. Climate engineering is completely disrupting the hydrological cycle, decimating the ozone layer, ionizing the atmosphere, thus creating more dry lightning, thus creating more fire ignitions, setting the template for these fires to burn so ferociously because it's incendiary materials like aluminum and barium nanoparticulates that are coating forest foliage, forest floors, structures. So many roads with the epic wildfires lead right back to climate engineering. Please learn more. Search the engineering wildfires section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org as well as the engineering winter section, engineering drought section. Please educate yourself, educate others, help us to sound the alarm. And to all those involved with the climate engineering, weather warfare, biological warfare, insanity, in whatever capacity, you bear responsibility for not only a tidal wave of carnage and decimation, but you also bear responsibility for the elimination of any possibility of a future for your own posterity, if we remain on the current course. To all those involved with the geoengineering, solar radiation management operations, power structure, warfare of every form, and the criminal cover-up of the same, I say this, wherever you are heading in the end, I hope the thermostat is stuck on the broil setting. A quick quote on true patriotism from Mark Twain to consider. He said this, In the beginning of change, the patriot is a scarce man, brave and hated and scorned. But when his cause succeeds, the timid join him, for then it costs nothing to be a patriot. We must all clear the lens through which we view the world. The colorings of bias, preconceptions, and programming must be wiped clean. The reality we have all known is disintegrating by the day, and it is not coming back. We are a part of a whole. If the whole dies, we die. If the human race remains on the current course, future generations will never be. Is it too late to change course? How can we know? Unless we collectively try, with every fiber of our being, to stand against the fading of the light. The first and most critically important leap we can make in the right direction, a leap that we must make, is to wake the masses to what has been done to them already, to what is unfolding, and to our near-term destination of global omnicide that is a mathematically certain destination, short of a complete course correction by our species. 
Make your voice heard in this critical battle to sound the alarm. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn how you can help. Share credible data from a credible source. Make every day count. Until next week, this is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org.